Hello everyone, it is October 7th, 2024, and it's been exactly one year since the terrorist attacks on Israel that hit the, uh, hit the uh, music festival in southern Israel. Now, the main point of this video is I want to point out is that terrorism is not activism. I know that there's a dispute, and a lot of people are still disputing on just who was who, where first and what everything is named. Now, I could go into all the history about all that, but I don't think a lot of people really want to hear that right now. Maybe later I'll do a video on the history, breaking it down to the specific creations of the nation states of Syria, of Lebanon, of Jordan, from Transjordan, and where they get their names, Syria, Lebanon, Israel, Palestine, Gaza, West Bank, and Jordan, because I think that's really interesting, and just why were these nation states carved out of the British mandate. So I'll do that some other time, but let's talk about what happened on October 7th. What this was was absolute, completely, without debate, terrorism. A lot of these people who came into Israel with, with gliders from the sea, with weapons, they, they had been guests in many of these people's homes before. That's how they knew where to find them in their homes. Now think about it. People in Israel need to have not just like a bomb shelter, but they need to have a safe room to protect them from attacks because they are attacked by the, their neighbors so much. This is a requirement. Now the United States had to do this back during the 20th century during this, the Cold War. Uh, for those of you that are old enough to remember, you have to have had drills in school for tornadoes, fires, and nuclear bombs, okay? Now, American children haven't had to go through that since 1991, but Israeli children have to do this today. Now, if you look at what would happen if any other country invades any other country. So when uh, the United States was attacked on 9-11, it was not attacked by a nation state. It was attacked by a terrorist organization that was operating within a nation state. What did the U.S. do? Did it ask the world for permission? It gathered, it gathered up a coalition, but they were going in if the rest of the world wanted them to or not. And I don't really think a lot of people had any hesitation to say, yes, USA, go in there and wipe out Osama bin Laden. You look at, other, look at, look at World War I, look at World War II, people didn't ask permission necessarily to, for the Austrians. The Austrians didn't need permission to go into to Bosnia and Serbia and say, you guys killed our royal members of our royal families. We're going we're to ask permission. They tried to build a coalition, but they were going in regardless. That actually is what led to the conflict, is allies getting in from coalitions. You look at World War II, you didn't, you, you didn't ask... The British and the, and the French didn't ask permission to go to war with Germany when Germany invaded and started to invade Poland. They just went in. Um, of course, the French got their butts handed to them initially, but the, you know, the Germans and the French went to war, and there wasn't, no one asked permission. It just happened. Now, would the, should, the, should the French have had to ask permission from the British and the United States and the Soviets before they started defending themselves? I don't think so. Look at the Soviet Union when the Germans finally turned around and started invading the Soviet Union. Did the Soviets need permission from England or from France or the United States to start defending themselves? No one, no one said that the, the Soviet Union, when it returned the favor of the, of the slaughter that the Nazis did, that the, that the Soviets were you know, way out of line. The fact is that during the Holocaust, millions and millions and millions of Jews were slaughtered and killed for the fact that they were just Jewish. It didn't matter what, what country they were in or how assimilated they were at. The fact that they were Jewish was enough to kill them. What happened on October 7th was the largest slaughter of Jews because they were Jewish since the Holocaust. These people, a lot of these young kids, or people that were more in favor of the uh, to idea of a two-state solution. More, they were more in favor of trying to have better relations with the, with the people who identify as Palestinians. That didn't matter. It didn't matter how much they wanted peace, how much they wanted to find a peaceful solution. The fact that they were Jewish was enough of a reason for Hamas to come in and kill them. Even if they were supportive of the Palestinian cause, it wasn't enough. They were still Jewish. And for those Americans, Jews here in New York City and Minneapolis and Des Moines, Iowa, that think, well, if we would just be more courteous, if we just gave them more of what they wanted, they would be happy. That's not true. In fact, Bill Clinton gave 
had a deal to give 90 some percent of the West Bank and to create a Palestinian named state in the West Bank and they didn't want it because they wanted all the Jews dead. So even if you are a simulated, non-practicing, non completely identified as an American, read the New York Times as your Torah, that's not enough for them. You still breathe, therefore you should die. That is what they're saying. When you translate it co correctly from Arabic, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. That's not what it says. The actual Arabic term is from the river to the sea, Palestine will be Arab, meaning there's no Jews at all, all of them dead. Now, there were Jews living in, in, in this area before World War II. They had slowly started trying to move back to Israel um, before, the, before World War II because, as well as throughout the Middle East and Europe, they weren't really welcomed there and were told to get out. Every place where the Jews had gone, they had been told to get out. You're not wanted here. They had been being killed and pogroms all over Eastern Europe for existing. The sole, the sole fact that they existed was enough to kill them. So in Eastern Europe, they were not safe. Western Europe, clearly they were not safe. They were not safe in the Arab world. You look at after the, after the, the, the 1940s, the, Islam, the, 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 the Muslim nations of the world expelled their Jewish populations through threat of death to all go to Israel. So that's clearly where they wanted them all to go. And now they need them to go somewhere else, preferably the sea. So here's the thing, when most people say, well, you know, from river to the sea, they can't name what river or what sea. They're not able to explain to anyone where the term Jewish or Judea comes from. And they can't even explain to me what a Palestinian really even is, or what ethnic group they are, or what language group they are, what religion they are. They really don't know. And I've tried to have a discussion with them just to kind of show them, like, you really don't know what you're talking about. But I can tell you this, that there were thousands of Jews killed on October 7th, and they weren't killed, you know, slow and as quick and painless. They were, their killings were drug out. They were long. They took, they, they took their time. The only other time in history where this was happening was in Poland in the 19, late 1930s and 40s, where they, by the time the Germans got there, all the Jews had already been killed because the Poles wanted to, to drag it out. The Ukrainians that sided with the Nazis, the Germans had to actually tell them, hey, you need to speed it up, quit torturing them for so long, just get it over with, because that all they wanted to do was drag out the pain of the Jewish person. They wanted to make them suffer. There is no place that Jews are really safe other than Israel. And the fact that they even have to have, every single house has to have a bomb shelter, has to have a protection room. So they're not really safe there now either. And they have never been. So I may ask you a question. In 9-11, when the United States went and blew the heck out of Afghanistan, did they need permission to do so? Were they creating genocide? They were going after the people who blew up those two buildings. When the... The Soviet Union went in to try to defend itself after the German invasion. Were they being told that they were committing genocide on the German population? Was Churchill uh, blamed for, for creating genocide on the German population? The Germans started that fight. They lost it. They got what they was coming to them. I have a lot of friends that are German. I have my, probably one of my best, my best friends I've ever had in my life was German. Love her to death. But historically, they got what was coming to them. Israel is doing everything they can to avoid casualties of the civilian population, why Hamas and Hezbollah are constantly, constantly targeting civilian areas while launching their attacks from civilian areas. The fact that the Hez Hezbollah and Hamas are storing their weapons and their military headquarters in nurseries and high schools and hospitals. This shows that they have no regard for human life. They just want, they're using human shields thinking that they will get, you know, sympathy points that their schools were blown up when all that they're doing is trying to use these humans as human shields. Hamas and Hezbollah have no validation for other human life. All they want is control and power. And if it wasn't for Iran, these two groups wouldn't even exist. So you look at Israel proper. There are Muslims that are in the Supreme Court. There are Muslims in their version of the, of the Congress and the Knesset. There are Muslims that are in charge of city councils, mayors of cities. There is no apartheid state. Muslims and Jews in Israel proper are treated with equally. There's no second-class citizenship 
in Israel proper. Now, in other areas where the Muslims have constantly tried to uh, do use suicide bombs and attack people, there's a little bit more of a separation because there's a, you're not going to allow your child to go to school when you have the chance of them getting blown up every day from school. If that wasn't happening, there wouldn't be any problems in the West Bank or Gaza. So Hamas has been wanting to blow up Israel and remove all Israel Israelis from the area for, for a couple of decades now. There's a reason why Israel says we're not putting up with this. You're not, we're not going to let you import weapons. We're not going to let you import, you know, ways to kill us. And what they do, they still got the guns. They still got the ways to try to kill them. So it, it, imagine if they were able to, do, to get hands on more stuff. Israel provided them with food, provided them with water, provided them with electricity. And that was still not enough. You, and to American Jews, I need you to understand this. It doesn't matter how much you want to give up, what you want to do to give peace. The fact that you are Jewish, even if you, even if you were completely assimilated to the country in which you live in, that's not enough. It wasn't enough for the Nazis. It wasn't an, it's not enough for the terrorists now. Terrorism is not activism. You cannot say that what these people did had any valid right to, 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 to be done because it attacked specifically the people who was probably even more sympathetic to their cause. Terrorism is not activism. No one's going to say that what the 9-11 bombers did, the hijackers did, was activism. That was terrorism. The 7-7 bombers, that wasn't an, an act of activism. That was terrorism. The knife attacks in, in England going all over the UK right now, that's not, terror, that, that's not activism. That is terrorism. And we're going to have to acknowledge this, that some of these terrorists, no matter what you do, they're not going to be happy enough until everyone is dead that doesn't believe the exact way that they believe and lives the way they want everyone else to live. That's not part of Western values. That's not part of human values overall. If you look at most places in the world, they don't allow that type of stuff. So why should Israel be forced to lay down and say, oh, woe well, is us, we exist, therefore we should die. Israel has the right to defend itself, and none of this would have happened if it wasn't for October 7, 2023. So we are at one year mark in anniversary of this. I hope this we hope that we hope we don't go to a two year mark anniversary uh, to, before we get the hostages back. But if they want this war to end, it's very simple. Give up the hostages and quit attacking Israel. That's the quickest, fastest way to end this conflict. And until that, until the hostages are released uh, and we recover all of the dead, there is no reason Israel should have to give up this fight. Israel left all of Gaza in 2005, even took the the graves of the people who had, you know, the, of, of the dead Israelis in the graveyards, moved everyone out of Gaza, and that wasn't enough. And no matter what you do, it's not going to be enough. In the 1990s, they were offered over 90% of the West Bank and even offered a, a Palestinian state. It wasn't enough because they wanted all the Jews dead. That's it. It doesn't matter if you're Reform. It doesn't matter if you're Orthodox. It doesn't matter if you're assimilated and don't practice. The fact that you're Jewish... They will kill you. That's all they want to do is you to die. And I need everyone else to understand that. So I don't care where you're from around the world. They want you to die if you do not follow their exact way of life. It's terrorism. It's not activism. Thank you very much for watching this. I hope you take some of what I said into, into account. I hope you try to look at this as an objective way. I do the best I can to be objective on this. I don't think it's true that you can have a completely unbiased view of anything but this one is pretty cut, clear, and dry. Israel was attacked, same as the United States was attacked. The United States went after and took out all of the people who, who caused that the terrorist attack on 9-11. Israel's going to do the same. The U.S. is on its war on terrorism to try to prevent further acts of terrorism. Israel has the right to try to, prefer, pr to make sure Israel is not under constant attack. So if that means taking out Hezbollah to prevent the constant bombarding of Israel over generations and generations, I think they have the right to do that. All they got to do is quit bombing Israel and the wars and the conflicts are over. That's that simple. How, there's no other war would be so easy to end than this one. Thank you very much for watching this. I hope you uh, like and subscribe. Please share. The comments are open. Please comment and discuss it. Uh, I will entertain every comment as long as they're not rude, as long as they're not wishing death upon anyone. That goes both directions. Um, you must treat people with respect because we can disagree on specific issues. We can disagree 
on the existence of certain countries and if they should exist or not. We're probably never going to solve that, but we should at least be able to discuss it, acknowledge that both sides have a position and they have a right to speak up, but they do not have the right to create terrorism and all terrorists should be killed. Thank you very much and have a good evening.